Dan Soder was on one end and I didn't know the three people in the middle. And he was, they were all arguing and they couldn't believe that Shane was like Catholic. He goes, no, dude, I'm, I'm Catholic. And they're like, like you raised Catholic. He goes, no, I'm Catholic. They're like, you believe in God? He goes, yeah, I believe. They're like, you pray. He goes every night. And they were like, what? And he starts like saying the, our father, he says the hail Mary, like, and they, they were like baffled about all this. And he goes, Christians, I don't know about that. Catholicism, one true God. And I was like, it's okay. You're See, close. I believe in the Catholic God, not like you all. That was <laughs> he the did funny this, one. He did this bit where like Allah came down and like tried to tell him something. He's like, get out of here, Allah. I want to talk to Catholic God. Welcome to The Crunch, the only podcast that is your daily crossover of the King of Queens and Everybody Loves Raymond. I'm Kevin James. And I'm Raymond. I wish... (laughs) I'm Raymond. (laughs) I am Pat, and this is Ethan. This is a podcast called I'm Deborah. We talk about we talk about a Catholic topic, and we don't interview Deborah from Everybody Loves Raymond because her Dude, people said no. They said no to us. They said no. So Patrick her Heaton, and Father Mike, Patricia Heaton, Patrick Heaton, Pat Patricia Heaton, but she's her Patricia. Yeah, Patrick Patricia. Heaton. You could just That's call me. her. What if you said, "I'm Patrick, you're Patricia." Together, Let's we can make podcast. Patrick Heaton. I'm not saying you marry this woman. I'm saying you have a podcast. I married this woman. Take her last name. <laughs> she takes your first name. You become <laughs> one entity. You become one entity. If you marry Patricia Heaton on paper, do you start getting those Everybody Loves Raymond residual checks? Does everyone love um, Raymond? Everybody love, Does it even produce residual checks anymore? Is it even being syndicated? Sure it, oh, my gosh. I bet, I bet it's still on Nick at Night. I bet it's still on. What channel do PBS? I need to tune into? Well, because now it's all now it's all YouTube TV, Paramount Plus, Netflix, you know? Netflix. Well, it's always been Netflix. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna go on TBS at eleven thirty at night, three beers deep, and I wanna watch half an episode of Everybody Loves Raymond before I fall asleep. That's the Players? that's the American dream. By the way, players only love you when they're playing. Players only love you when they're playing. Everybody loves you when you're Raymond. Whoa. And everybody hates you if you're Chris. <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody hates a you if you're Little people, Bill. People make shows, all kinds of declarative statements in the naming of these shows. Everybody, everybody loves hates, Raymond. Everybody loves Raymond. Everybody hates Chris. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. Whoa. I don't like I don't like TV anymore, man. Yeah, I wish I I wish I hadn't spent some of my formative years watching some of these sitcoms because I look back on them and I'm like, ah, man, you could have been reading not funny. You could have been reading G.K. Chesterton and the Church Fathers and smoking a cigar at the age of twelve. And I think instead, I would have been worse. <laughs> I do think you probably are the worst guy to have become an early onset trad. I do yeah. think you would have you would have been a miserable person. I think Especially, it would have been a horror. Oh, because then you would have gone to Franciscan. Oh, it would have been terrible. I'm so glad you were cool and did stand up comedy instead. It, it's important. It's important to have that element of my life because, like, people mm-hmm. were people were upset at me and when on on the internet today. And when people mm-hmm. are upset at you on the internet, they go to your profile and they try to learn things about you to yell at you, and then they just yeah. tell you things that you've publicly declared on your own profile. I've only ever had one person like find my Facebook, you know, that was weird. Yeah. People get mad at me. They call me an incel. You have or two a fake children. cell. One guy, one guy called me a fake cell at one point and I didn't, my head spun with that one. What I don't know that what to mean? do about it. A fake celibate. Like I was, like I was pretending to be an incel, but I was actually not. So that's like their, their version of stolen valor. They're like, you don't I, not have sex <laughs> like us. You, You're fake. You have a t- hey, you have a ton of sex. Get hey, out of here. <laughs> hold on a sec. Hold on a sex. You can't. That's impossible, I, man. I didn't know what to do with that. I was just like, thanks. Like I was like, I, oh, Excel. How nice of Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I try to maybe, every so often post a picture of my vaguely, family. 
Maybe so that you people said know. something vaguely misogynistic, and they were like, "Hey, that's our thing. You're not allowed." It's when to I do that. no, it's when I said um, uh, the difference between focus can do something trads can't, which is attract women. Funny. It was a great tweet. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, people lost their minds. People, people didn't. Um, yeah, no, that's fair. People. People were upset. I should have. I should have said this. Uh, I should have said this when the Last Supper thing happened. It's an old joke, but it's a good one. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I. It's a uh, people always. Uh, Christians get upset about the chosen, or Catholics get upset about the chosen. Mm-hmm. Um, I could. I could re. I could rephrase it. Catholics got upset about the Last Supper at the Olympics because the last culturally relevant thing that we did was the spotlight scandal in two thousand and two. Um, just correct it's true it's that it's people true. we don't we don't matter to the outside world bishop Barron is not the next fulton sheen because people invited fulton sheen on tv people like just was sheen. was on tv he was on tv uh, on purpose you know but what he I mean? was on like he was also on hollywood squares like, he was on, he was on <laughs> wait actual, really yeah dude yeah hold on fulton wait sheen, a minute fulton sheen was on hollywood squares can you imagine fulton sheen on there with like gilbert gottfried and they're and they're barking at each other across the squares, and Whoopi Goldberg is in the middle. Hold on, Fulton Sheen, Hollywood Squares. It was probably back in the day when it was like Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey friggin' Bogart, dude. Wait, it's um, yeah, 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 wait. It's Hollywood Squares, and then the problem is that the screenshots from this era are so blurry that even if you can, you can't tell uh, who it is on there. Is it? Anyway, Where? this is this is bad podcasting. I'm get, I'm getting Kamala ads. We got to we got to get back into this. I know, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's I crazy. Don't know if to... we can find that, I was, I'm going to dedicate some time this evening after my sweet sweet wife goes to bed to finding the long lost tapes of Fulton Sheen on Hollywood Squares. Was Bishop Fulton Sheen on Hollywood Squares? What's the equivalent Man. today of that? What's like the Bishop Barron <laughs> going on on <laughs> Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> <laughs> you see Ben Chang from Community going, D- dude. <laughs> he he walks off the set. It's Pope Francis. It's Pope <laughs> Francis. He was the big great lizard. It was him. <laughs> oh, they, they. Oh gosh, I can just imagine it. He's the song that he sings is "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." <laughs> He sings Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. No, he would sing some like Bob Dylan songs. That's his thing, right? Is Bob Dylan. He likes Bob Dylan or maybe um I mean, he really does like Bob Dylan. He talks about Bob Dylan a lot. He talks about Bob his only things that the that his handlers have allowed him to like publicly are baseball <laughs> and Bob Dylan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he has the audacity to be like America and Christianity need to Christianity needs to be more people need to respect Christianity and we need to stand up to them because they're being made. It's like, dude, you like you you like a bunch of things that don't exist anymore. You baseball, like a church Bob Dylan, you like a yeah. church that has relevancy, you like baseball, and you like Dob Billen. And baseball. If it was called baseball and everyone was a Chad, then I would watch. Unfortunately, everyone is is soy. Yes. Base, baseball uh, used to be cool, man. I'm just saying Bishop Aaron lives an existence that he can afford to live because he lives a privileged life as a bishop. Not in the monetary sense, but in the sense no. that, um, that nobody is ever mean to him. Yeah, and if you they know? are mean to him, it's on the internet, which is fine. Dude, I would love to have him on the show and be like, what is it like as a bishop knowing that nobody is ever telling you the truth? Yeah, dude. That must suck. <laughs> that must be brutal, you know? Like, people are just lying to you all the time. Not Maybe not lying, but like, you know, fudging the numbers, you cooking like the books. Screening your mail. Yeah. Do you like, think come he on. has people screening his mail? I don't I, obviously I think for like bombs might. and stuff, but like for other. No, things. I mean in general, bishops have people screening. Not they don't have them as in like they're not asking people to, but people right. screen their mail. And like their the email. secretary. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely yes. Yeah, you can't you can't get near the bishop unless like one or two people let you. 
which I think is fine. Oh, He's the local ordinary. Yeah. Leave him alone. I just, uh, I would love to talk to him about all of this one day. We should have him on the show. I, his episode of Clerically Speaking was boring. So I don't it know. It was the worst episode, but it's because they, 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 um, I don't think it was because they asked bad questions. I think it was just because he gave bad answers. So we have to put him I in think, a position where he can't give a bad answer. I think the problem, and you've mentioned this, is that the problem yeah. with having, for our style of show, mm. is very good for someone who's like very well recognized, respected, but works for themselves. Ah, uh. you know, like is is their own boss. Bishop Barron is not his own boss. Who's Bishop Barron? Who's pulling the strings of our board, of our erudite puppet? The Napa Institute. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> well, no, but it's like if Bishop Barron says something that he that people don't like, then all of a sudden money gets pulled and payroll doesn't you don't, you don't make payroll and a bunch of people lose money because That's there's true. a bunch of people that work for Word on Fire you're be- that have you're beholden. Yeah, who's going to create value for the shareholders? And by shareholders, I mean the donors. I mean, I don't know if it's... I think if Bishop Barrett had a strongly held opinion, he would not let money get in the way. Strongly you know? held, I think, is the key. I'm not... I don't... I'm not... I'm not being like, oh, they can't... They can't say what they really think because there's money involved. I think mm-hmm. it's... Uh, he can't say what he's thinking about because he can't speak freely. He has to ha- He has to speak carefully. I don't... Dude, imagine I'm not, one day... One day he rolls up to YouTube and he's just, friends, today I'd like to discuss a very interesting book that I've been reading lately. I think you should too. Steve Saylor's Noticing. <laughs> I was going to go in that direction too. <laughs> I've been flipping through this thing called The Protocols. It's pretty, book, it's pretty this fascinating. This book called Bronze Age Mindset. And it's really... <laughs> Actually, I've been reading $100 million offers and I've gotten even uh, dude, more jacked. Dude, imagine Bishop Barron on the Hormozy tip. He would be he would go crazy with it. Dude, it would be intense. He wouldn't be giving away he wouldn't be giving away lead magnet Dude. ebooks that are just interviews. A Bishop anymore. Baron Alex Hormozy gym workout crossover video. <laughs> Did you um me and me and, and also right? Ludwig from the Yard is there. And also <laughs> This is just, and this also, just a dream you had. And, <laughs> and Van dream. Nystad and Van Nystad is commentating the whole thing. And then and then and then and then uh, uh, and it's the best. All right, what I want to see, what I want to see and what? I think I think this might be able to happen. Yeah. I want to see a Bishop Baron. I want to see Bishop Baron interviewed by James Donald Forbes McCann. That's what I want. Wow. This actually could happen, I think. I think it could and I think it should. I think we should stage it. I think mm-hmm. we should like have it look be really well, like word on fire, kind of that. What's the, there's there's got to be a word for that style where it's like very big and black and it's got like serif font, you know? It's like <laughs> it's I, I think it's like a turtleneck vibe, you know? It's what are you, what are you talking about? So Bishop Barron's interview. So most podcasts you want him to do that, like a Zach Galifianakis between two ferns? No, that's too low res. I'm talking like very high society. Mahogany table, oh, black curtain, like the Shia mean. interview. What he's got going for him is like right. it's the the um it's very minimalist, but in like a regal way. And mm-hmm. all of the title cards are serif font. It's very professional. It's it's kind in, of like the actor's in studio. Yeah, with yeah. that guy whose name I'm not remembering, but he was bald. Charlie Larry Rose, King. no, no, like the Charlie Rose show, kind of. Sure, but uh, with. With Actor James studio dressed like James. By. I don't think James should dress any differently. I think he should dress like James. And it would be it would be incredible. I think this should happen. James, if you're listening, and I hope you are. He's I not. hope you took that pledge. I took his pledge. Yeah, I think I think having that that would be that'd be the dream. I think a, a depending on how things go, I think a more likely thing in the short term is the Bishop Baron Shane Gillis conversation that would be cool because i saw a clip the other day of shane gillis on a live podcast did you see this yeah the kill tony it wasn't kill tony it was it was a different show it was a different it was called skank fest i believe um these people need to find god and a better marketing team but uh they he was on the panel and someone was like dan soder was on one end and i didn't know the three people in the middle and he was they were all arguing 
and they couldn't believe that Shane was like Catholic. He goes, no, dude, I'm, I'm Catholic. And they're like, like you raised Catholic. He goes, no, I'm Catholic. They're like, you believe in God? He goes, yeah, I believe. They're like, you pray. He goes every night. And they were like, what? And he starts like saying the, our father, he says the hail Mary, like, and they, they were like baffled about all this. And he goes, Christians, I don't know about that. Catholicism, one true God. And I was like, it's okay. You're See, close. I believe in the Catholic God, not like you all. That was <laughs> he the did funny this, one. He did this bit where like Allah came down and like tried to tell him something. He's like, get out of here, Allah. I want to talk to Catholic God. Like it was just a very funny, <laughs> very funny bit. But he's uh, he was just defending it, you know? And I yeah. think there was, there was that, it's the peasant faith thing that we've talked about before where uh, he just like knows that it's true for some reason and believes in it. He has all the money in the world, all the respect in the world, all the fame. And then he's still, he's still standing up for it. So I think if that keeps going the way that it's going, I think the Shane Gillis, Gillis Bishop Barron conversation could happen. And I think it'd be way funnier than the Shia LaBeouf conversation. Do you think, yeah, what's up that we are easy. I'm scrolling through the, the topic channel here that we yeah. started and haven't used. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks. Ninja fish for putting Thank that you. together for us. I appreciate it. Uh, but I'm scrolling through the topic, main topics channel on our discord. And, um, uh, I don't even know where that is. It's right underneath. It's right above dating topics, whatever. Uh, ben well, I don't know where that is either. Ben. There's too many channels. I guess I, I run the podcast. I, you do the, um, <laughs> Ben, Ben posted a reference to a tweet that I made a while back about, um, how Biden isn't actually a Catholic president. I've made that joke. Like, what if we had a Catholic president? That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and he screenshot congratulations to Kamala Harris for being our first Catholic president. <laughs> That'd be such a funny tweet. That'd be such a funny tweet. All right, um, continue. The and then someone mentioned, uh, someone tweeted, screenshotted Gloria Purvis, and she's talking about how JD Vance supports the abort, whatever. Um, I don't, I don't actually know. I haven't looked into JD Vance's opinions on abortion enough to speak on that, so I won't. Um, I do think that Biden's opinions are probably worse and mm-hmm. have done more harm than JD Vance's, but whatever. So it it made me think like I'm very I'm very harsh on Biden, right? Because he's someone that I disagree with on most things. And he's an imperfect Catholic. Shane Gillis, an imperfect Catholic. Yes. And I'm more willing to say he's on our team than Joe Biden. Do you think what is the difference? Mm. And is am I simply just giving preference to people I like? People I like. So are you putting Joe Biden on one side and JD Vance and Shane Gillis on the other side? I'm putting yes. Yeah. I think you just might like guys under fifty. I think that just might be That might be what it is. Yeah. It might be like I I I, I cringe at the boomer cats and I like the millennial cats. I think JD Vance is a different story because I think he's Together they don't equal Joe Biden's age. I don't Correct. Know. That's crazy. <laughs> um, I think JD Vance is, uh, it stands to be seen because I inherently distrust. Like when you're a politician, you've made a deal with the devil, right? Like you have to Correct. have the position that it, that gets you the most votes possible. And so like JD Vance, Brian, by the way. You, what were you right about? Oh, they're they, ages together, together. They don't equal Joe Biden's age. <laughs> um, he said something. He said he basically thinks it should be decided by the states, which is like, I don't know. It's a, it's an opinion that you can have. This is JD Vance, by the way. It's not Shane Gillis. Um, I don't. This is not moral legitimacy, but political reality. Give people a choice between abortion restrictions. I think he's he's basically going with the, um, which is actually a political strategy that I agree with, which is like let's get some restrictions on abortion on a stance that more people will vote for rather than having a full restriction position that less people will vote for, which means ultimately fewer babies get saved, even if it allows for some abortions in the short term. Cause it's like, I mean, which would you rather have, you know? And the, the problem is, is that people hate that they cannot mm-hmm. stand that, but it's like, what's your other option? Just keep yeah. losing. You know, and then more babies get killed. Like, I don't know. I think it's a. So I think for. Uh, so I think his abortion stance is actually fine, given the position that he holds in the strategic uh, advent 
advantages of it. Um, but I do think that for someone like Shane and someone like JD, as opposed to Joe, it's like, you can tell that there's some type of, um, misplaced earnestness, like with Shane, it's sure. like this kind of ironic, like I can't go too deep into this because it would mean that I would have to change my lifestyle. And with JD Vance, it's like, I can't go too deep in the, into this because it means I would lose votes, but at least like, you know, that it's there and you know, they, they kind of feel bad about it. Whereas with Joe, there's like no hint of remorse anywhere. Yeah. He's like, he's like, I am Catholic and the Pope yeah. told me that I'm a Catholic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like a weird, uh, it's, it's his identity, but in a, but it doesn't actually inform anything about his life. Yeah. Whoa. Why'd you switch us? I switched us. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. We're back. That's that weird. Was crazy. That was wild. I don't, I can't handle being on the other side of the screen. I thought it was switching no. it just for me. No. Because I wanted you to be more on this side, but yeah. I was, just move I your was monitor. Wild. Flip anyway. it around backwards. What do you think? I I think that's fair. And I, I your, your point to that they're just younger than Joe is, is fair. Yeah. I, I think they're more like it us. Might, it's a generational thing. I think the way that, the way that Joe's generation and jd and shane's generation approaches their catholicism is different um now now jd's a convert so i'll take him out of that but it's like shane was born catholic mm -hmm. in mechanic in mechanicsburg pennsylvania so very close to where joe was born in scranton They're that's true the tale a tale of two cities a almost. tale of it was the it was the best of times it was the worst of times I realized when I read that book, I realized it was about the Revolutionary War in France. Mm -hmm. And the two cities were London and Paris. Yep. I, I realized that. I thought it was just about the best of times and the worst of times. The Tale of Turns Two Cities. Turns out it was just the worst of times. Yeah, the Tale of Two Cities is British propaganda about how liberalism is okay when we do it. Not when you. Yeah, there's an evil lady with an axe. That's about all I remember from that book. Mm -hmm. I feel like Charles Dickens would just take women and give them weapons. And he's like, that's half the book now. That's half the book. On the revolution. Old, in old Chuck Dick. Old what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> I so, forgot what we were talking about. Uh, we were talking about a tale of two, a tale of two dudes. A tale oh, of because two, of because yeah. one was born in Scranton and the other one was born in, in wherever. Uh, yes. Yeah, wherever Parks and Rec. So a baby, a baby boomer, a baby boomer from Scranton, and mm -hmm. a millennial from Mechanicsburg, both born in. I I and so I I think that where they were born and the atmosphere they grew up in. Scranton, when Joe was growing up, you know, was booming. I'm sure, you know, the, you know, the manufacturing industry upon which Scranton was built was booming mm -hmm. and it was thriving. And in the fifties, when he was 20 was, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's true, but it was, was booming. I think he was born in like 48 or 49. Okay. So he is a boomer. And so when he was growing up, there was a lot of prosperity and a lot of traditions where people were just joining clubs, you know, like that was Catholicism was on the rise, but so was Freemasonry. So was bowling leagues. That's a, a common stat. But when Shane was growing up, you see this crumbling uh -huh. tradition around you, like Mechanicsburg, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. I don't know if you need, I need to tell you how, how bad that probably did post steel crash. But he probably looks around and he sees, you know, Here's my, there's churches closing. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's factories closing and you see the vestiges of tradition. It's like, this is just who we are, but it's, you know, we're, it's in the past. It's not as relevant. And that's probably today. why someone like Shane is so much more likely to hold on to something like football because it's this one thing that kind of like for a town like that, mm -hmm. steel is gone. The churches are gone. The Lions clubs are gone, but the football team's still around, you know? So that's like the only link that someone like him has to the past generations, you know, because mm -hmm. his dad probably played football or at least watched football. Yeah. And then you have the whole like Notre Dame, like we watched Notre Dame on TV because they were good in the seventies and they were never good any other time. Yeah. And I, 
I don't like Notre Dame. I'm just going to say that out loud. I know you're supposed to like Notre Dame as a Catholic. Not a fan. Not a fan. I'm just going to say that. Say that That's right actually now. the we only watched this because they were good in the 70s is the only reason why Pittsburgh Pirates merchandise still sells. That's fun. And fact. the Steelers, dude. Also. Well, the Steelers, the Steelers were good also recently. No. They've won a super they've won they they won two of their six rings in our lifetime. What do you mean? You're telling me Ben Cheeseburger won a Super Bowl? I'm pretty sure he did. No. Maybe I'm thinking of Brett Favre. Big, big Ben Roethlisberger. He turned into a clock after he retired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't laugh at that. This is stupid. One of our... Control, one of our... control F Super Bowl. Uh, he, okay, so they won the Super Bowl. He won in, when he was 23. That's crazy. What's your excuse? Dude, in 2006, he became the youngest Super Bowl winning quarterback in NFL history, leading the Steelers in his second season in a 21 to 10 victory of the Seattle Seahawks. Wow. And they beat the Arizona Cardinals. You mentioned the Cardinals being in a Super Bowl after completing a game winning touchdown pass to San Antonio Holmes, 35 seconds left in the game, but he lost in his third. So he only won two. So that actually kind of sucks. So one of our. <laughs> he only won two. Tom Brady won seven. So Tom Brady won seven. What did, oh, I thought your name was Big Ben. You sound a lot like a little no, bit to me. It is it is cool that Tom Brady has more rings than the city of Pittsburgh. That's kind of fun. Anyway, so last thing on Pittsburgh. One of the priests in Pittsburgh, Father Joe Freedy, looks a little bit like Ben Roethlisberger, and he never mm-hmm. lets you forget it. He tells the same story where he was jogging in the point, and someone was like, that's Big Ben, that's Big Ben. He tells that story all the time. Look up Ben Roethlisberger and Father Joe Freedy together. I can kind of see it. They have a hoodie on. It's dark. It's raining. Yeah. They're both huge. So. Yeah, a lot of people tell me that I have the youthful aura of a of a pre-Fight Club Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've told me that. A lot, of t- a lot of people tell me I look like Ed Sheeran, which is mean. <laughs> That's the ugliest guy. That's the ugliest no, guy you can look like. Don't be mean to Edward Sheeran. He Come on, really if I read, well. why don't I look like Ron Weasley? He he got hot. Ed Sheeran kind of looks like Ron Weasley. Why don't you say Ron Weasley? They don't say they have, Ron Have Weasley. Rupert Grint and Ed Sheeran ever hung out together? Have I, they ever had like a... They like get together they like, hey, situation? we're the only two gingers in England. That's crazy. Yeah. You seeing what's happening in England, man? It's crazy. There's no gingers in England anymore. It appears that they have hung out together. Really? And they're dressed like each other. Okay. Well, they, they took it too far. Ed Sheeran. No, sorry. Rupert Grint is dressed like Ed Sheeran. Man, you were in Harry Potter. He should dress like you. Yeah. Right. I don't think... I think... Who's more famous? I think Rupert Grint is more famous than Ed Sheeran. Let's let's check the Google trends. Like, everybody knows I'm in love with the shape of you, but also everybody knows... Once I make my move, you know, everybody knows that too. So how do you, de- how do you decide who wins? This is like an epic rap battles of history. How do you, how do you one trend? What's the thing where you do one trend versus another? Do you remember epic rap battles of history? I do. I'm Adolf Hitler. <laughs> okay, oh, hold on a minute. Come on, that's, that's a classic. It's hold Adolf Hitler versus... <laughs> Darth Vader or something? Yeah. I don't know what they were doing. I think you should spend a lot of time figuring out how to compare those trends and I'll keep talking about football. No, I'm not going to do it. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure it out. Anyway. Phoebe, you know what I hate? <laughs> what do you hate? Big tech. Okay. I live in constant fear of my precious Twitter account getting taken down because I don't own it. I don't own, I like owning the places where my website is. And that's why the crunch, I don't know if you know this, the crunch website is hosted on Patmos. Are you you familiar with Patmos? I am not. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's so good. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Patmos is your island of refuge in the ocean of big tech. They provide top-notch web and app hosting services, hosting and API GPU services. And if you know what that means, Tell me. That's awesome. I don't know if I should say that, but I'm not the techie guy. They handle all of our website stuff, and it runs more smooth than it ever has in the past. Um, All backed by no censorship guarantee. I know I can say anything I want on this podcast. I made a joke 
on the last episode, a little bit off color. I know that me saying something like that isn't going to get me thrown off the internet and our livelihood won't be taken away from us. You like you like feeding our children, right? I enjoy that very much. Thanks to Patmos, I can safely feed my children ongoing. Um, they offer unbeatable pricing and security from the ground up because they own the dirt that their servers sit on. They own everything that your stuff is hosted on. Um, and I get the best service because I have like an actual person to talk to. Her name's her name's Camilla. She's she's great. And they never offshore or sub out work. Everything is done in house by them. There's just no better value in tech services than Patmos. I'm I'm honest. I'm on I'm, I'm being honest when I say that they've taken such good care of us. Uh, whether you want to build an awesome new app or a website or host your current site, all you need to do is reach out to Patmos at patmos.tech. They help businesses, missions, churches of all sizes accomplish their goals with great value and service. Tell them the crunch sent you and you get 10% off your next web project or free hosting migration, whichever you need. That's patmos.tech freedom as a service. Isn't that great, Phoebe? It's amazing. I know, right? It's awesome. Thanks for joining me for the ad read. I love you. (laughs) Hey, Phoebe, do you remember when I crapped myself the first day I did Exodus 90? I will never forget that. (laughs) So hi, my name is Patrick Devy. I did Exodus 90 a couple of years ago, and I did poop my pants on the first day because I fasted and drank too much coffee. Um, but did you know that Exodus 90 is not just about fasting and cold showers before Easter? Did you know that? No, I didn't. Tell me more. So they do a little bit, a little thing called St. Michael's Lent that you can actually go sign up for now if you are a man and you're interested in getting yourself ready for uh, getting yourself ready for Advent, getting yourself ready for Christmas. Um, you can download their app and you can actually get their, um, they have daily scripture meditations, prayers, reflections on getting closer to God as a man. They have also have a new course on the Eucharist just in time for now that we're after the Eucharistic revival. We can you know, get closer to Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. If you go to exodus90.com slash the crunch, you can let them know that we sent you and you can enjoy the beautiful, uh, the beautiful prayers and courses they have available on there right now. It's exodus90.com slash the crunch. Thank you, Exodus90, for sponsoring this episode of The Crunch. I think I think you're right. I, the generational I also think thing is huge. Recently I've had a conversation. This was this is relevant. Um where I was talking to someone that had come back to the church mm-hmm. within the last couple of years. Um because of he came back to the, I'm trying to make this as general as possible. So he used uh, some drugs and the drugs gave him an experience where he realized that he needed to turn his life over to God, basically. Mm. And he is not necessarily living what you and I would consider to be the most moral life, but he's, he's trying, right? Like yeah. he is, he believes it kind of like the Shane Gillis thing, right? Like he believes it. He's living his life. You know, there's some things he just doesn't know, mm-hmm. you know, but he like wants to know. He's not opposed to it when you explain it to him. And I had a conversation with this guy and I was just thinking about if I had talked to him like three years ago, my response to him would have been so different than what it was now, which maybe is, is just a product of like getting married and having more life experience and being older and all of these things. But I genuinely think that my stance on these things has changed because I've, I've met faithful Catholics like James McCann and other people in my life who are priests even that I've met in my life who are very, very holy and very faithful people. And sometimes even good and holy faithful men piss in the sink. Yeah. Well, well, that's disgusting. And that should be, (laughs) that should be grounds for some type of penalty, but I don't know. I think we just expect too much of everyone all the time. Yes. I think it's it's this weird balance that I can't figure out, and I don't think I'll ever figure it out, between like, okay, everyone, it's like the Jose Maria Escriva, like you're called to greatness, why are you ever wasting a moment? Ever. You should always be praying and always be working on your virtue. Always. Versus like... Vibes. The, just like God is so merciful and he wants so many people to be in relationship with him however they can make it happen, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, why would we get mad about that? Yeah, you know, it's a it's a very odd. I haven't even figured it out for myself, even 
but it makes me it makes it so much easier to have conversations with people because I'm not as my butthole doesn't get so tight when someone's like I did drugs like instead of freaking out I'm like cool tell me more about it <laughs> man that that's sounds like wild. an that's I would ne- I would never do that that sounds like <laughs> an interesting experience <laughs> how's fent have they improved it at all how's <laughs> they, that have they have they made it so that the fentanyl doesn't kill you immediately maybe just over time <laughs> Yeah, no, it, I you, you hear this every time someone brings up, you know, hey, this person is sinning, or it was that that, that that's a it's a thing on the internet a lot from like lefties Twitter people. They're like, oh, you know, you know what else is a sin? Sure, sex before marriage is a sin, but you know what else is a sin? St- uh, st- uh, deploying nuclear weapons and stealing from the poor. Um, and it's I don't know, it's like I. I guess it's just it's difficult when it's like the there's people who are trying and there's people who are not and we have to give yes. credit where credit is due to people mm-hmm. who are trying. Mm-hmm. You know, and we should give no credit to people who are not trying. Because yeah. getting it half right everybody gets it half right. But only some people let God make up the difference. Some other people just like they they pretend that half right is 100%. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like what is the difference functionally between a hypocritical Pharisee mm-hmm. and a hypocritical tax collector? Both mm-hmm. are people that are, you know, like what's the difference between the Pharisee and St. Matthew? You know, St. Matthew is defrauding people and stealing their money. And the Pharisees are defrauding people and stealing their money. And why does Christ condemn one? And ask the other to follow him, um, and I think it's because he could see in in Matthew that Matthew was trying. Um, I think it's also yeah. for another example, like the uh, the woman at the well who had yeah. seven husbands. You know, mm. like obviously, if you if imagine this is what people do all the time to public figures, like, well, they've been married so many times, and they have they do they've promoted all kinds of bad things yeah but she like has this powerful encounter with christ and then it's not like those things don't matter anymore he's like go and sin no more but it's also that's just like not what he talks to her about yeah you know like that's not that's not the he doesn't he's not he doesn't condemn her about those things Mm-hmm. He's like, I see you, and I know you. I know what you've been through. Uh, I'm the person you've been waiting for, and it's just like me. Like I, it's like come to me now. Not like, so. It just feels odd to me that we have this, the JD Vance situation or the Shane Gillis situation. Well, he does it. He still talks about how he is abortion, or this guy he's, uh, promotes masturbation, or this guy he has so many wives, or this guy like, yeah, okay. But what if those people, they just, uh, you know, they just have had an encounter with Christ or they're waiting for it and they just don't know where it's coming from. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know. It makes me sad, I guess. It makes me, it genuinely makes me sad. Sure. I guess I just have more sympathy for Shane than I do for Joe Biden <laughs> because I simply don't like sure. Joe Biden. Well, you know? I also think I think there's something unique about someone his age who's persisted so long. Yeah. You know? Like it like we are kind of repulsed by it because it is like ugly. Like this is a guy who's in his 80s mm-hmm. who is rejecting the grace of God every day through his actions and like claiming to be something that he's not. Also to be fair, he has dementia. And so who knows where he's at now. And and the other thing is that he's promoting sin merely because it is convenient. Like it's not that he's always he's he's regressed, you know? Yeah. Or it's like he was he was very against gay marriage back when it was popular mm-hmm. and okay to be against gay marriage and it's politically expedient. And now mm-hmm. that it is no longer that way, he has mm-hmm. gone and, you know, putting uh, trans flags up at the white house. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah. It's, Dude, it's I saw not, a video. Uh, this is not, it's not related, consistent. I, yeah. It's not consistent. Whereas like, is like Shane Gillis is, you can see that it's like, he's trying and here's this area that has not yet been cleaned up and it's okay. Right. He's going to get to that event. Like he has half an hour of sex jokes in his most recent special. It's a lot. And it's like, it's 
some of it's just hard to listen to because you're like, mm. ooh, not good. It's just like, it's just gross. Like, it's funny, I guess, but it's also just like, all the rest of your stuff is funny. You made a jo- you made a hilarious joke about the dogs that killed Abu Bakar Al Baghdadi, and it was hilarious. It's awesome. You did a you did a you did fifteen minutes on George Washington's slave quarters, incredible, <laughs> right? But then you had to do twenty minutes on when he gets back. Words into that I don't want to say right now. When he go, when he gets you know? back into a corner, he goes into sex stuff, and you can see this on Saturday Night Live where he's like, all of a sudden he goes, "Oh no!" and then he pulls out the sex joke from his special and a bit about yeah. masturbation, and you're just yep. like, ah, you just you just you just got nervous and you went with what worked, you know? Yeah. Like, anyway. Speaking of Biden, I saw a video today of, on Twitter. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was like Trump in the last two weeks since Biden dropped out, and it's that clip from Phineas and Ferb when Perry the platypus can't find Doctor Doofenshmirtz and has no one to fight with, and he's like daydreaming about fighting with him, but he can't find him, so he's just sadly <laughs> walking around <to> the city. <laughs> There's like Man. this music playing in the background. Uh, I think it's he is sad. I think he does. I think he because he because Trump said at one point like they stole the presidency from Biden, and so he's like kind of sticking up for Joe yeah. in a certain sense. And people are like, "Oh, he misses him. They like um, each other, man." They he was he was the Batman to his Joker. They they completed Truly. each other. It's it's and now, not it's not. If you have Harley now. Harley Quinn without Joker, then it's no fun. Like anymore. all right, whatever. No, you know that's actually. That's, I'm gonna really skip good. this this movie. Yeah, that's a really good uh, comparison, actually. Thank da- you. T- damaged. <laughs> uh, it's just not fun to watch him versus Kamala because it's so it's so unevenly matched. Yeah, she just doesn't have it, you know. But everyone's pretending that she does for some reason, which is I don't I don't think she has it. They're not gonna. Are they gonna debate? I don't think she. I just saw something that said that she turned down the Fox News debate, which is the one that was supposed to be on September 4th. So I don't know what the deal is with the debates. Because I don't think there, I, there's there's no reason to have one. Trump said he's all good. He's all good to debate. Yeah. If I were Kamala, I wouldn't debate him either. No, because... The only reason they made Joe debate is so they could get rid of him. Yeah, there's no reason. I, I just... it's pure It's purely spectacle. I'm just... It would be it's 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 a bad look for them to nominate her without a vote and then never have her speak against her opponent and then just run her. You know what I mean? It's like she never faces her opponent ever. And so it's like you know, it'll 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 feel weird. I Yeah. We all know the debates are silly, but it's part of it's you know, it's the it's the it's the 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 Nixon and Kennedy, the Lincoln and mm-hmm. if you want to rule in America, you need to survive a public televised spectacle. Yes, that's that's yeah, part of being no, that's an American. True. Yeah, you got to yeah. run the gauntlet. You got to yes. you got to be able to go on television without saying the coconut things, without laughing like a maniac. You got to be able. To, <laughs> it's just unsettling, unsettling laughter. She she really does. It's, it's it kind of it's makes impressive. you want whatever room you're in, you want to get out of it yeah when she laughs like that it's not it's not it feels it's like not i'm pleasant. i'm trapped with some type of ghoul it's no it's i mean i again i, I hate to do what the left is doing and the lib what the libs are doing and, and comparing everyone to various parents but mm. she's like Ugh. she's like your friend's mom and it's like it's nice to see you mr spiro um i'm gonna go uh play smash bros with your son now it's been pleasant talking to you. I've gotten yeah. my, I have my high C, my my sunny D, and I'm leaving. She's now. not even like your friend's mom. She's like the like a, she's more like a teacher in school that was always. Oh, fair, yeah. You know, like in my mind, she's like this kind of oppressive. Like you try to crack, she like cracks her jokes and she thinks they're funny and no one else laughs. And then you try to crack a joke, and then she puts you in the hallway. Yeah. And then you do it again, and all you're trying to do is have fun with Andrew Business Jordan in ninth grade English, and you keep getting sent into the hallway <laughs> over and over again. And then you hear your parents hear about it at parent teacher conferences, and then you get your PlayStation privileges taken away. That happened to you, man. Banana bread at work, dude. 
when you itch that your did, eye. That did happen. That did happen to me. Yeah. I bet it did. She does remind me of a teacher that I had in the, in, in high school. Yeah. 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 It's a shame. Yeah. Come on. one day, ninth grade teacher energy. I'm less confident that she's gonna lose now than I was a couple of weeks ago. Well, I don't. I don't know what the. I don't know what the Trump campaign is doing. I said this to ORV Bells because he tweeted something about the. Um, the percentages evening out of the chances. Mm-hmm. Tim Dillon, I love Tim Dillon because I think he's so, he's so on the nose about so many. Mm-hmm. Like he he is he has his finger on the pulse of the American people, which I think mm-hmm. is great for a comedian. And he has very insightful uh, takes on on certain things, just because he has access to people in high. So he like hears what rich people are saying, but he's also like, he's so he's like a Long Island scum. Like mm-hmm. he's he's like from a very from very poor family in Long Island, but now yeah. he's like has access to all these people in the Hamptons, and so he has this incredible range of perspective that's really wonderful to hear, and it's very funny. But he was talking about he's like Trump needs to make it like Vegas. He needs to let the good times roll. He needs to bring out the fun. Kamala, they're twerking on stage. They can't twerk forever in the Kamala campaign. So you gotta you gotta match the energy and you gotta let it ride for way longer. And I I think he's doing that. He's going on streams. He's doing cyber he's trying. dances. You He's know? trying. I feel like letting JD be the head, the front of the campaign for right now is not the best. No. Uh, Cause JD's not a very fun guy. <laughs> no, he's not. He's, he's, he's a, you know, he's a cardboard cutout that fits in the right spot where you need him to, but he's not like the diet Mountain Dew joke, man. Brutal. I mean that played in Ohio. I guess. I just every time he tries to make a joke, I I just feel him bombing. Like I feel it like when I yeah. try to make a joke at the National Eucharistic Congress live podcast and no one laughs. You know. <laughs> I think I thought they were gonna run JD as kind of like a sympathy. Like wow, look at any any American can grow up and become the vice president of the United States. I thought they were gonna run him as like a kind of a uh, a, a an aspirational figure because he is yeah. that hometown guy. He grew up in a yeah. shack. You know. He they like said had- they're running him as like a worse version of Matt Walsh. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not hitting as hard. Like JD I his 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 humble beginnings are indeed humble and he had no aspirations right. in college to to do this. Like he kind of he's kind of here on accident. You know, that's mm-hmm. how it kind of feels. Like, oh wow, he's he did the right place, right time. Kind of this Obama level like he was only a senator for a minute and now he's in the White House. You know, mm-hmm. it's just it's a it, I thought I thought they were going to run I thought they were going to do that, but they they have Rags to riches. Mike Pence was great because he was just a mannequin that they could bring around with them to all the different. Maybe that's what they wanted stops. JD to be, and he. And then, but it's, he's like he's the worst of both worlds. Like he doesn't have, he doesn't really, he's not really capturing the rags of riches thing. He's not really capturing the like I went to Yale Law School, I have an elite tech background, I know more than you. Like he's not, he's not an mm-hmm. intellectual, and even yeah. if he is, he sucks at being one. They're and not playing he's that not, he was a veteran. They're not doing the veteran thing. He's not very good at the culture war thing. Yeah. Like he's not funny. <laughs> I'd be a good vice president, I think. I think I think we should run for I think we should be the Hey, someone get the American <laughs> Solidarity Party on the horn. Get him on, we get him on the line. <laughs> And if they tell yeah. us if they tell us we're not serious candidates, all we have to do is say one word, magician. You ran a magician. Right. You guys you ran a magician. You could easily run a couple of podcasters. I think I would be great in talks with Iran. I think I would do a great job at getting rid of those WWMDs. Which one of you is Hezbollah? <laughs> <laughs> sitting in sitting in the uh, sitting in the chair with my Russian my Russian translator across the across the way from Vladimir Putin, <laughs> and I lean over and I just go. How do you translate? How do you translate "ra ra Rasputin, lover of the Russian queen" into Russian? How do you how do you say that? There's a clip. I know I always reference the yard. Do you guys got to bear with me? But they go to the Riot Games headquarters, which is the company that makes Valorant and these other video games. And Slime is doing this this mockumentary where he's interviewing the game designers, mm-hmm. and he's like mad. And at one point, he just says to them. <laughs> NBA Young Boy was the name of a rapper. Uh. And the person, he's talking to an old woman who's like in charge of designing something. And she goes, I don't know what you're talking about. And he looks back at her and says, 
young boy never broke again. And it's, it's just such a funny interaction. But I'm imagining that's what you would be doing to Vladimir Putin. You'd be like, rah, rah, Rasputin. And he'd be like, Skoshka, Skoshka, boy. And he'd be like, mother of the Russian queen. <laughs> Lover of the Russian queen. No, no, no. You you say what I say. You say it wrong. That's what I say. Ra ra Rasputin, mother of the Russian queen. She was my mom, and now she's my mom. <laughs> and now she's the queen. Uh, I like that song a lot. <laughs> well, that's that's it for our show today. Did we accomplish anything? I think was we this did. anything? I think we gave our opinions about the election, which is what which is what Ben wanted. And I think yep. that we we successfully talked about why it's okay to like J.D. Vance and not like Joe Biden, but also feel like J.D. Vance could be doing a little bit better. Um, I think that the Kamala Harris campaign is the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, and I saw the 2016 Chillery Clinton campaign. So it's... Um, yeah. Man, it sucks. Uh, because they don't need to be funny. They... The, the people that are looking at the campaign and are like, wow, that's cringe, are Zoomers who can't or aren't going to vote anyway. And it's playing towards millennials who love it and eat it up because they were like, you know, they're just BuzzFeed millennials finally have their candidate. I do think that if Kamala said Pokemon go to the polls now, it would hit. I think it would hit. That'll be a thousand like, dollars for that joke. By honestly, the way. If you use it, I'll sell out. Honestly, I think if they uh, if they just took back all of Hillary's cringe isms and mm-hmm. they just used them now, ironically, Electric Factory. That'd be pretty like if funny. Kamala, if Kamala made a TikTok and it was like, I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids, people would love that. They if, would if love she, it. If she had a little beer koozie that said more like Chamala Karis or <laughs> more like more like Chillama Karis, I don't know how to say it. it was, if it was some like, uh, like forced portmanteau. That'd be good. I would I would yeah. I would vote for her. You remember when Hillary barked like a dog? Anyway. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have, folks. Join us in a couple <laughs> of days for the dating corner. Ah. That'd be good. Um and let us know if you like us talking about topics like this. The, by this time next week, Patrick will likely have a child in Probably. his arms. Probably. And and you will get me solo on the podcast next week. I might just do, I've been thinking of all kinds of creative, I'm going to do avant-garde podcasting while you're gone. You're just going to be just in a morph suit, throwing ketchup on yourself. <laughs> no, just, that's just for the Patreon. Don't spoil it. <laughs> Don't spoil what they Patreon. do. Patreon.com slash the crunch. If you like what I, if you like what we were talking about and you think that our episode is worth a cup of coffee, that's how much it costs to support us on Patreon at 10 bucks a month. And in exchange, we'll give you another episode free of charge in exchange for $10. Uh, and I would like to 70. thank our sponsors, yeah, Exodus please. 90 and Patmos Hosting Solutions, who have been with us for through thick and thin, and they are wonderful and we love them. Go check out, go to exodus90.com slash the crunch. Go to patmos.tech. Patrick, do you have anything else for the people? Uh, <laughs> I want to see Tim Kaine or whatever his name is uh, dab on Ellen. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. I Please can't tell the over. difference. He looks just we, like the other guy. Tim Waltz and Tim Kaine. Same they guy. They look exactly Mike, the same. It's Mike Pence in one of those rubber masks. Thank you all for listening. Please pray for us. We'll be praying for you. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.